We are here at the Rancho Relaxo Twist of Fate Freedom Farm Goats of Anarchy Holiday Party. I'm here with Caitlin Samini, and she is the owner operator of Rancho Relaxo. Is, am I correct in saying that? Owner operator, founder, and president of Rancho Relaxo. And there's no one else that helps you. No, Len, my now husband, helps me, but no, we don't have any help. We have. One volunteer, Caitlin, who comes every Saturday. We just started bringing in some volunteers, but the training process is long, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, we've been doing this by ourselves for five years, and we're just now bringing on some help, so. Wow, so take it back, because I actually don't even know um, how, how this even happened. What inspired you to even start this rescue farm? Oh my goodness, really, honestly, nothing. It was an accident. Um, I had a wild Mustang at the time. I had adopted a wild Mustang and I didn't want to board her at a facility. I wanted her in my backyard. So I started looking at farms and I couldn't afford anything. So I went further south, further south, further south until I was able to afford something. And, um, and then I moved in there and I adopted a thoroughbred and off the track racehorse who was going to slaughter. And then we had those two horses and it was great. And then it kind of just, happened our neighbors got us chickens as our housewarming present and I was like uh, okay so you know you live in the country when your your neighbors get you chickens as a housewarming gift but those chickens like changed my life um, they made me realize that all animals matter all animals feel things and from that spiraled into Rancho Relaxo you're gonna make me cry which is something that <laughs> <laughs> you, you get very emotional on on social media, but I love it because it just shows how genuine it is. So you're actually allergic to most of these farm animals. Yeah, how? My hands are always bandaged. I always have like blisters on my hands. They're always bandaged. I get rashes. I probably even have a rash right now on my chest. I'm deathly allergic to animals of all kinds. Like, you know, it's not just horses. It's not just dogs. It's every animal. But honestly, I feel like mental health is the most important thing. And if I wasn't helping them, I would go crazy, literally. So I feel like the physical ailments don't compare to, you know, the mental aspect. And I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So you have a humongous uh, internet following. You have like 184,000 followers. And I think a lot of these people are here because of Instagram. How has social media um, helped you in terms of fundraising and just outreach for the rescue farm? It's interesting, like, you know, you always hear people complaining about the internet and like, you know, there's so many trolls and there, there's so much bullying that happens and it's true, but when you search for the good, it, it really outshines like the bad. And, and for us and for Goats of Anarchy, Twist of Fate, Freedom Farm, we could never do this without the internet. We, we are all internet based, our following. And it, it's organic, but it happened on the internet because there are people all over the world that follow all of our organizations. And the only way that they could do that is online, like really. Well, thank you so much. This part, I'm so excited for this party. We've got the DJ, we've got performances. I'm gonna perform, and we're gonna have some amazing vegan food. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you do, and let's have a good night. I'm here with Ashley DeFelice. She is the owner operator, can I say that? Owner operator of Twist of Fate uh, Farm and Rescue Farm and Sanctuary. I knew I was gonna forget that. Um, when did you start Twist of Fate and, and why? How did it all happen? Um, we started in September of 2012. We began because we started rescuing horses from slaughter. Um, and we kind of ventured into special needs horses, horses that can no longer be worked. So they're only pasture sound, they can't be ridden, stuff like that. The horses that basically no one else wants. And along the way, we kind of figured if we're trying to show people that horses' lives are still worth something, even though we can't use them, why can't we do the same thing for farm animals? So we kind of ventured into taking in, well, rescuing, slaughter bounds, pigs, cows, sheep, goats, farm animals, um, and we just kind of grew from there. So where, how do you actually rescue these animals? Where do you get them from? They all come from different situations. Some of them come from, some of them are owner surrenders. Some we 
rescue from the auctions. Other, like a lot of the horses come from slaughter lots, like directly before they load onto a slaughter truck. We'll take them right from there. And where are you guys located? We are in West Grove, Pennsylvania. And I assume you guys are vegan. We are, yes. So was the rescue farm first or was veganism first? The rescue farm was first. Um, like I said, we started out rescuing horses and it wasn't until after we started rescuing farm animals that, well, I've been a vegetarian for 10 years. So I was always a vegetarian, but I, I wasn't a vegan. And I rescued a cow from going to slaughter. And even then, like it didn't dawn on me, like I still consume dairy and stuff like that. And it wasn't until a couple of auction visits that I was just like, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to do that. I'm contributing to this. I'm, these are the animals that I'm trying to save. That doesn't make sense for me to do that anymore. And so something just clicked and I was like, what am I doing? Like, no. And from there on, it was just easy for me because it was just like, yeah, I can't, I can't contribute it to that anymore. So. So we're so excited for this party to get started. Um, how did this even come about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> We're really lucky um, with the four rescues that we all are able to work together and get along. We all want the same thing and we want to help each other and we want to help the animals more than anything. And if working together helps us help more animals and helps us reach more people, then that's what we're going to do. So we all figured what better way than to do a joint event where we can have everything together and all of our supporters together so this is hope beckery she's one of the volunteers today hope you actually started an anonymous for the voiceless chapter in philly um how did you get involved with this event well, with this event, I um, so when I started the Anonymous for the Voiceless chapter, um, Liberation Philly, which is a grassroots um, organization doing activism in Philly, uh, they reached out to me and were like, we've been doing activism in the city uh, for a few years. We have equipment. Let's work together. And I was like, yes, let's do it. And then I just kind of got just kind of dove right in with them. And like they were just such amazing people. And it was like super welcoming. and. So I just started getting involved with them and that they, they told me about this event, that they were gonna go as Liberation Philly as volunteers. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. I'd love to go and volunteer and help with it because it's beautiful, you know, it's awesome. So how long have you been uh, an animal activist? Um, well, I guess technically um, my very first um, activist event that I went to was a vigil that was just last month. And then tomorrow is going to be my second activist like event that I'm and I'm actually organizing it. It'll be our tr cube of truth tomorrow. So it's just I mean it's scary and frightening because I don't know what I'm doing. But I have heard a lot of like a one one of the girls that's coming to the cube was saying how you know like just because it's your very first involvement in activism um, doesn't really mean that you have to take it slow. And it's kind of inspiring that you know oh there is something going on and there is something to do and there are people involved. So um, you know just dive in and go for it. You don't nobody really knows what they're doing they just go for it and just try so I'm like excited but it's frustrating because I look back and I'm like why haven't I been doing this for the whole time I've been vegan I just wasn't aware that there were grassroots organizations doing stuff and um, it's really great to be surrounded by those like-minded people because they really encourage and inspire you so well thank you so much I'm I'm excited for you for your cube for tomorrow with the president, founder, owner, operator of Freedom Farm, Jamie Castaño. Jamie, when did Freedom Farm get started? Uh, Freedom Farm started in uh, 2014. Um, we didn't become a 501 until September of 2016, and uh, we've really blown up in this past year or so. Actually, can you kind of walk me through that process? How do you become a nonprofit organization in the eyes of the law? I don't <laughs> Jeez, I don't even know. I had somebody set it up for us as a donation. Um, yeah, I had never done it because I had always heard that it was expensive to set up, so I just kind of stayed away from that. <laughs> and then uh, somebody had asked why we weren't a 501 with what we were doing, and I was like, I had never had the money out of my own pocket because we always ran out of my own pocket. Uh, we, we weren't 501 to get donations and stuff, so, uh, so they said as a donation they wanted to set it up for us. Are you vegan? Yes. 
Did veganism come first or did the rescue farm come first? The rescue came first. And did you have a particular animal that you grew up with that kind of like inspired you to, uh, you know, have a love for all animals? I just grew up with dogs and like rodents and stuff like that. Um, so not really, uh, but I've always loved animals. And is there anyone else uh, that works with you that you'd want to kind of like shout out and let us know the, who helps you? Um, I work with my fiance Tara and uh, my friend Glenn. Leanne Loricella of Goats of Anarchy. When did Goats of Anarchy get started? We started Goats of Anarchy in 2014, um, kind of as a hobby farm, and then it evolved into a rescue um, 2015, so it's very recent. It is very recent. I feel like I've known of Goats of Anarchy for years and years and years. That's good. That's good. I want everyone to feel like you've known the goats forever, but it's really only been about two years. So, and is it just goats that you guys rescue or are you like very specific to that cause? When I started I kind of start dabbled and I got the mini horse, the mini donkey, the pigs and I fell in love with goats and I'm trying to stick with that because I don't want to be a jack of all trades when it comes to animals. Um, there's a lot to learn and we are specifically geared towards goats with special needs. So, actually, I think I just watched a video from you guys um, where one of the goats just got a wheelchair, which was really adorable and kind of like got to run around for the first time. We actually have, um, I think, nine goats in wheelchairs right now, and we have, um, I don't know, 10 or 11 wearing prosthetic legs. We have blind goats. We have goats who are neurological. Uh, we take everything. <laughs> How important is social media to you and your cause? We wouldn't be Goats of Anarchy without our followers. Um, they provide us with the funds needed to have all of the surgeries, the wheelchairs, the prosthetics. Um, they are our support system. Social media is the backbone of, of our rescue. The song's called High Tide. <laughs> It's like, it's amazing to see you all here. We tell you every time, like whether it's online, whether it's in person, whether it's a donation, whether you repost our posts, whether you, you know, spread the word about us, whatever it is, we're so grateful. Um, whew, sorry. It happens every time. If you guys have ever seen me in person. Yeah, every time. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> um, but we're just very grateful. There's, there really aren't enough words for us to describe how grateful we are um, and it might not seem it or if like you guys message us or if you email us or anything like that we don't get back to you it's not because we don't want to it's because we're literally knee deep in poop <laughs> and, and most of us like even though a cup we have like a few volunteers here and there we are all hands-on all four of us um, are hands-on we do not have like a staff of employees and none of us do even we, we all have a couple but like we're all still very hands-on. We know our animals, we know our mission, and we'll never lose sight of that. Uh, I also wanna say that like the silent auction going on, everything was donated from really, really amazing companies. Um, and you can bid throughout the night, and at the end of the night, you can pay any way you want. Um, cash, PayPal, credit card through PayPal, we'll help you through it at the end of the night. But um, yeah, so if you go around and browse throughout the night, I don't know when we're stopping at. Do you know when we're stopping at? Like 6.30, 7? 7? We'll just wing it and hang out.
Gupta. She is a founder of Liberation Philly. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, we're one of, I'm one of the co-founders of, uh, actually an organizer of Liberation Philly. When did Liberation Philly get started? Um, so we originally used to be Direct Action Everywhere, Philadelphia's chapter, but we basically do the same thing, just a different name. Um, so we are Liberation Philly as of August. Oh, wow. Um, so you got you were talking about you also do this like save vigils? Yeah, so we're also, Liberation Philly is basically like an umbrella of many different grassroots organizations. So we've got the save movement and we recently started the Anonymous for the Voiceless chapter in Philly. So we have our first um, cube tomorrow, which we're really excited about. We had our first vigil in front of uh, Saba Halal Life Poultry um, a few weeks ago. And we have over, over 55 activists come. So it was one of the largest activist events in Philadelphia for animals. Uh, so that was really empowering, really great. We've got a lot of new activists coming in, getting involved. Um, so yeah. Actually, we went to Philly um, not that long ago and realized there's a ton of places, a ton of vegan places or places that have like a separate vegan menu. And we, coming from New York, had no idea how like kind of vegan forward Philly was. Philadelphia has done a great job um, capitalizing off of the vegan community. We have over 24 all vegan vegetarian restaurants. So the food is great. Our job as activists is just to convert the um, vegans who are just doing it for a lifestyle, but to, to create them into activists, to speak up and actively like justify and uh, the fact that we should not be killing animals. So yeah, that's our job. Well, thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you for helping with this event. And uh, let's go party. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs>